I'm now going to take on the question of ownership, empowerment. It's been this term that's come into business and work and sport for about the last 15 to 20 years. When I was a young coach, a 23 year old, I got an English student side. I think I was the youngest England anything coach in, in anything ever. And I was surrounded by these players, some of them went on to play Super League and spent some time in Australia, some of them. I'll be totally honest with you, I spent all my time trying to justify to them that I knew about football. And I flipped it right round and I, I ended up asking them more questions and getting them to come up with answers and I sort of subtly massaged it into a game plan. Without even realising it, before I'd read the textbooks, I'd empowered those players by getting them on board. And they all had fond memories of that. But I did that because I was thinking to myself, I'm only 23, are they really going to accept what I say as a coach? So I suppose I was a little bit scared. Probably helped that experience when I became more and more confident and I became a little bit more, I suppose, autocratic. It helped, though, to go from one end of the extreme to the other so that I could go back and find my level of empowerment. So, for example, if I'm coaching Poland, as I have in the last couple of years, or the Ipswich Diggers, the, the men's representative team in the Ipswich town, I'm a very different coach than if I'm coaching at school. And bear in mind, at school, on the school programmes that are run, you've got year sevens who are 12 and seniors that are 18, and there's a different coaching style that applies to them along the way the older we get as people the more ideas we get as to how things should happen so you've always got to have a vehicle of, as a coach to hear those opinions but what you don't want to be is a slave to those opinions and I always think that the best way to empower your players is to say Listen, I've got some non-negotiables, and nine non-negotiables are things like punctuality, uniform, if you don't train, you don't play, all that kind of thing. I don't think you find a good team and a good group of people who would disagree with those. Um, but then there's other things, such as um, where you might empower your players. So you might say, right, um, I've got these three players in mind, are you comfortable with them, what do you want to call them? might be an example, particularly if it's a rep side, because there might be a player, half-back, who says, oh, at my club they called this, can we do this? Or there might be a cluster of players from that club and they can call them those names. Um, you may have a chat with the senior players and say, listen, we've got a meal tonight, we're in camp. Um, what do you reckon? Meeting first and then meal, or meal and then meeting? That kind of thing. <clears throat> You may get a player or senior players in on your training planning with the coaches at times just so they can hear what's going in and then listen to your players because your players, particularly if they're older, might go, coach, I think we need a little bit of this, a little bit of this. And then what you can do then is sort of explain why you're making the decisions you're making and how that fits in. If you're an inexperienced or not a very good coach, let's face it, some people are, if you empower your players too much, they will take away control. Do not underestimate players' ability to control a team. So, I know for a fact that players sometimes go exactly against what their coach says because they don't agree with the game plan. And when they're in their clusters in the change rooms, they will say, listen, we'll just do this, we'll just do this, we'll just do this. And then when it works on the training field, the coach owns it. And on the playing field... He says, oh yeah, that's good, that's what I want you to do. When it doesn't work, the coach hammers you. I've seen that a thousand times. So it's always good to get your players involved in the process. Um, but in terms of answering the ownership and the empowerment question, I've seen t people take it to the nth degree and go the other way and give it all to the players. Well, that for me is a complete and utter recipe for disaster. I have a saying, the tail can't wag the dog. And even in this new society that we're in players still like boundaries people like boundaries put your boundaries in and say these are my non-negotiables I'm not willing to budge from these don't put too many in and you'll find the players tend to like them anyway particularly males we love our boundaries we love being put 
in a box, but have your freedom within that box. Okay, have a think about that. If you've got any questions, send it through. But um, to answer the ownership question, I'm all for it, but don't go gung ho and give them loads of control, or else you'll have none.